Croeso, welcome back to uh, some more Welsh stories. Now, one of the most famous towns in Wales is called Merthyr Tydfil, which you all might know. I'm one of those people who thinks it should be the capital of Wales, not this newfangled Cardiff, which propped up during the Golden Age of Coal and got larger and larger and more and more prominent, but it's actually right down the bottom point of Wales. Merthyr used to be the largest town in Wales, massive steelworks, a great history, lots of, uh, sort of famous, notable people have come from there, and it's up, you know, further up towards uh, the centre of Wales. Now, one of the interesting things about it is the name itself. Now, the, the general conception is, with the words that um, Merthyr comes from the word for martyr. So someone who's martyred is someone who dies for their cause. In this case, it would be Christianity. And the person was Tidville. And Tidville is considered to be very, very pious, um, you know, very strong faith. And when this raid came in on the village where she was holding... One of those tried to fight or run. She didn't flee. She stayed there and prayed to God. And she became a martyr of this assault. And the town of Merthyr named after her. Now, there are some other theories. Like, for example, one of the part of the research we're doing on Britain's hidden history is that the name Merthyr might be far older. And it comes to Mercha. And it's to do with the planet Mercury. So, but that's another story. Let's go back to the story that most people go with. And here's an old article I've been sent by Shifu. This is from a newspaper. Uh, I'm not sure how old it is, but it does tell the story wonderfully well. And it's gleanings about St. Tidville. So it's a letter, and it's Sir St. Uh, Saint Tidville of Marta. Who really was she? Maybe this piece I've taken from the book I have called The History of Merthyr, which was published in 1867. See, we like old books. So we glean from the Truman manuscripts and Cambrian biography that at this eventful epoch, it may be conjectured about the year 420. So it's over one and a half thousand years ago. That's the kind of depth you get with Welsh history. Uh, it's before the, the Saxons that even came to Britain, so just to give you an idea <laughs> of how long ago it is. So they lived near Troy de Rue, and the raids of the Irish Picts have been more than usually severe. So the old man and his family met to sympathise together in their sorrows. And then we've got a quote. Vivid, the picture that meets the imagination. The careworn chieftain, the fair Tidville, her blooming sons, her warlike brothers, her husband too were there. Sorrow must have been, must have fled at such a time. And near tranquillity, flowing taff and sullied them. Then the hills, the beacons, their grand background, they lingered while here a band of Picts, Brachta Fichti, and Saxons poured down from the mountains, and an indiscriminate massacre began. Neither prayer nor beauty softened the heathen heart. Tidville, her father, husband, and sons were at once slain. Talks about the unsullied hills. Before, was it how green was my valley? Before all the mines and the houses went everywhere in this beautiful rolling holy land. So Rowan and Reen, with others, escaped for a while, but pursued, and while just desperately defending a bridge over the Taff at Troy de Rue, they fell mortally wounded. This filled the pagan soul with delight, but their triumph was brief. Nevith, a son of Reen, hastily gathered the natives together, that's the Welsh, and rendered invincible by the terrible strength of their passion and of their revenge, poured down on the heathens like a mountain flood, scattering them to the winds. And then, amid the sobs of a stern but loving race, we could imagine the bleeding remains gathered and placed with solemn affection in the scene where the foul murder had been committed. And so Merthyr Tudville, or Martha Tidville, the little hamlet became known and memorable because it was a small village in those days. It's when the, the, the 19th century, when the steelworks industrial revolution arose, arose that the population went boom and became huge. The common notion, we turn to the quote, the common notion, and we imagine the right one, is that the martyrdom of Tudville occurred on the site of the old church. It would seem that it was the general custom to bury where the martyrdom took place. So Tudville, we can justly conclude, was laid underneath the old church and hither came many a mourner to lament over her grave. In addition to the dedication of Merthyr Church to her memory, in Glamorganshire, uh, sorry, the church in Lusverny in Glamorganshire was also dedicated to her, and as well at the part now termed Brecon Road, the lower part of Garth Merthyn, 
the district of which Brachen was regulus. We're going to do more about Re- Re- Brachen soon. And his Welsh roots, he's not Irish, okay? Anyway, <laughs> was deemed un- endowed with miraculous virtues. But of the facts of whether or not a well had special virtues, even surpassing ordinary wells, no record exists. It is, however, no slight of imagination to suppose that Tidville's well was believed to be endowed with extraordinary powers. Hoping that this may help you in some way. Thank you very much, M.D. Thomas of Glacier Road, Troyn Rodrick. No way. Troyn Rodin, Merthy Tidville. Ah, I wonder if he's still there. So go and lock the door next time. I got there quite a bit. All right, so hope you enjoyed a little tidbit. The Martyr, very famous and important part of Welsh history. Till the next time, Heather.